Hey everyone, it's uh, Gordon Einstein, uh, your local Dubai crypto attorney, and I'm continuing my series of short, effective interviews uh, with my local impactful, intelligent, and successful friends. So I like that way of describing my buddy here, uh, Oliver Wolf from Healing uh, Capital. Uh, Oliver, welcome onto the show. How are you? Hey, Gordon, thank you so much uh, for inviting me and uh, having this conversation today with you. So let's try to bring some additional impact to the audience. Yes. Yeah, so they really like our or, or your podcast here, what you're doing. So I'm very excited of joining it. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm happy having uh, talking with you. Yes. Thank you very much. And, you know, we've been, we've been trying to I schedule thought. each other for a while. And finally, the stars align, which is perfect. So. Yes. Let's before we lead up to what you're doing now. Well, actually, I'll tell you what, give me a couple of sentences on Healing Capital and what you're doing now, and then I'm going to get a little bit of background, and then we'll dive into those two special topics we mentioned. So, tell me what you're up to this moment in the short version. A short version. So, hey, on Capital, we are not like a VC. We have like two verticals or two pillars. The first pillar is we're building regulated products here for MENA region and Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. With a strong uh, regulator background from the D DFSA in Dubai or from Luxembourg or Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And the other pillar is we are accelerator venture builder still, and uh, but more on a, a series round to IPO. But what was my original, what I learned originally as a banker. Yeah, so I come a bit back to my roots. So, uh, and we're looking most likely fintech, health tech company, bringing them to the uh, uh, stock exchanges doing IPOs, doing fundraising for them, trying to accelerate them, bring it, bringing additional value with the network, what we have, yeah, uh, to make the companies grow. Wow. That's, that's, that's very interesting. Yeah, that's that's, nice, that's yeah. a lot, and a lot to unpack. Um, yeah, okay, so I mean, I, I love my work, you know. I, sorry. I really love my work, what I'm doing. So I'm very still excited every morning waking up and uh, doing exactly what I always want to do. I have no boring job. It's It's sometimes very hard and difficult, but in principle, I really love what I'm doing. So, and you see me smiling when I talk about it because that's it's a part of my heart. Yeah. So, <laughs> that, 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 that's great. And, and you're, I mean, it, it's fair to mention that you're very well connected and very well respected in the Dubai business community, in the high tech community. I, I, I hear that again and again that your reputation is sterling and you know a lot of people. And I, I don't even know, I don't know how long you've been here. Maybe we'll talk about that. But you, you seem to accelerate your your relationships very nicely. So it's you know yeah it, it's in Dubai it's a little bit tough to find people you know both well connected with good reputations who stand the test of time and I I think you're one of those which is fantastic. Let's let's take a big step back and like every other superhero I want to know your origin story. I want to know your history that led you to Dubai that led you to these ventures. Um, you're originally from Germany, yes. Yeah, original from Germany. Um, you still hear it on my accent, what I have. Yeah. Um, what accent, Oliver? So, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I keep it. I like it. People like it, or they don't understand me. So that, that's both okay for me. Sure. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, principally, I'm uh, this year. I'm 25 years in Dubai. Uh, first time I came uh, 99 uh, uh, as a tourist uh, to Shasha because Dubai was not existing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so in uh, Shasha, you had, let's say, it was similar maybe to Dubai today. You had uh, alcohol, you had parties, yeah. And in Dubai, in Dera, I, yeah, in Shasha, I remember this time. And in uh, Dubai, Dera, you had the Sharia police. So when girls came in too short uh, um, clothes or like dressed too easy, then they got a ticket and they said, look, you go, go to the hotel, change. If mm -hmm. we catch you next time, we bring you to the airport. Yeah, between uh, Dera and Shasha, there was desert. And um, I still remember then in, in the morning time, the mm -hmm. police came with buses and picked up a bit the drunk people who, who, who tried to make it from Shasha back to Dubai uh, at this time. So yeah, it was a completely different time. And um, of course, when I drive to Dubai, I have to many places um, remember uh, or memories, yeah, how it has been developed and... Uh, so yeah, um, I'm somehow very, um, Dubai got my my first home, meanwhile, yeah, and to many places I know stories, and I know, of course, I know a lot of people. I have friends here now since 25 years, yeah, um, and of course, uh, if you stay so long time here and you have friendship, especially with locals here, over mostly like 25 years, yeah, 
So you're really connected with the country, with the culture, and um, I like really where I am and uh, how how things going. That's fantastic. So what what did you study in Germany? Well, I had a pre diploma in uh, economics mm -hmm. and in anglistic on a university in uh, Tübingen. Yeah, um, I was all like in a fraternity, yeah, in a fighting fraternity. <laughs> so well, it was I a good time. Wissenschaft, exactly. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, beside I already start working for Tusen Group at this time, or Tusen, uh, Tusen lifts and es escalators. I went for them to UK. Uh, after my pre-diplomas, I changed to a University of Applied Science in in Nutting Geisling. It was very young university at this time, and I make my master. Uh, I made my master in in banking, real estate, and in uh, investitionsrecht. And today we would say M&A, but at this time it was not existing, this word. Mm -hmm. So beside then I started working already by LBBW, is one of the seven biggest German banks in M&A and investment banking, uh, ABS security, CMBS papers. I went for them to Brazil and New York. So I finished there also my master thesis. Um, then I had different steps between. So um, I have a degree at the uh, New York University for corporate finance and two degrees on the European Business School. Mm -hmm. um, I, I never made a PhD because I think it's a bit, um, takes too long in Germany, like two to three years, and I don't didn't want to waste too much time with theoretics. But principally, I have a very good backup and know-how in banking, uh, portfolio asset management, M&A, all these kind of things, IPOs, yeah. yeah. Uh, where I was joining it, and uh, still until today, I'm very happy that I have this knowledge and can just as a backup for me always to take uh, the experience from there. Well, so it, then I work. It seems highly relevant to what you're doing now. I think that the education was on point. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, of course, and and um, I mean, as I have been so many things done in my life, you know, I never had one job. I always had like two or three jobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, and all of this experience now with the age comes together. And of course, it helps a lot. So I, I like to help uh, the companies where are stocking somewhere, mm -hmm. yeah, to make them grow and to and 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 to fulfill their visions. Yeah, and the capability I have, yeah, the knowledge I have, I have the network of doing it. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's, uh, that's very good. So then I helped to establish uh, German's uh, biggest um Online brokerage company Interhip, they're renamed now. So, uh, so we made like in 15 to 18 months, like 1 billion revenue. It got sold to Inc. Diba. Then I was uh, a CFO and also partly shareholder on, uh, on a company named Redeem. We were the biggest, um, the second biggest uh, employer on Tattoo in Estonia at this time and market leader for second market devices in the telephone and the telecommunication. Yeah. So, and then uh, most likely my blockchain and crypto carrier started then. Oh, I was number one um, in Dubai and TCOM, mm -hmm. the first tower. So I make the, the project management for it. Together you, with a I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. I, I missed one thing. How did you go from Germany to Dubai? Did, did I miss that? Yeah. Uh, um, I came to, to Dubai. This was um, 2002, 2003. Yeah, I had uh, two investors, one Russian investor, and one Italian investor, and they set up uh, international associate holding in Chafsa, mm -hmm. yeah, in Jebel Ali. And uh, we were like an equity company, mezzanine company for uh, for for real estate financing. Yeah, at this time, uh, still real estate, uh, today is much easier for them. Uh, yeah, at this time, uh, the banks were much more restricted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... More likely. So we did project with, uh, uh, for example, City of Arabia with the Galadaris. Yeah, we had the project, yeah, the G Tower at this time, mm -hmm. and other ones where we supported them and when we try, where we also tried to invest in it. But then from them, I was here until, uh, yeah, uh, two thousand and uh, uh, I don't know, I have to think. So already so long time ago, but it was here until two thousand six seven, then I was half half here until two thousand eleven. Uh, then I was in Scandinavia, so I had a break between, really? yeah, um, yeah, and then I came back uh, beginning of 2019 uh, for Iconic Holding. We tried to do here dualist thing. We were number three, issuing a full regulated Bitcoin ten to the German stock market, to the etc. And our idea was to be number one here in the GCC region with this project, but uh, unfortunately Q3 came uh, were first. Yeah, and then um, part of the companies got uh, got uh, got got sold, and I decided to stay in Dubai. 
Then I got managing director for CVC, CV Labs for the MENA region. Yeah, um, our CV Labs, we also like uh, managed and opened the DMCC crypto center. We incubated the first, I don't know. That, that, that was more recently, yes. Yeah, this was 2021. Uh, mm -hmm. So we incubated the first um, uh, around 1,000 blockchain crypto companies, then the DMCC, we built up the DMCC Crypto Center. Then I was co founder for Crypto Aces, um, invested also in Sensua and, 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 and in the fund. I sold everything then uh, or stepped out like two years ago. And then I uh, then the journey with uh, Helion uh, started. Yeah. So we're still a startup. Yeah. We're still not uh, big, but uh, I think we're doing quite well. Uh, what what uh, what we're doing. And um, I think I, actually I really like what I'm doing here. So I'm quite happy with the situation. So we okay. last weekend. Maybe, uh, like two, two, startup, but I think you're making a big impact. I mean, your name is is spoken yeah. of a lot yeah you know for me it's i i, I always focus on long-term relationships mm -hmm. i've never been focused on short-term relationships so and for me it's much more uh worth than uh when people are coming even i don't see people and they're coming after half a year, year or one and a half years they're coming to me and say hey oliver um uh, you you know I know you let's do this project or you have interest in this and that. So I'm really focused on long-term relationships. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I don't like this hype, this up and down. Yeah. I'm more like trying to do this uh, continuously in the same way that sometimes a bit boring for people because I'm not participating in everything and all parties. <laughs> yeah. But principally for me, it's I'm, and uh, I don't want to waste my time with people who don't bring any uh, impact or don't bring any, additional value to my life yeah and it's the same with the business you know everyone knows dubai uh, mm -hmm. we have a lot of let's say uh, a blenders here yeah a lot of people which are coming to dubai with not serious uh, ambitious yeah mm -hmm. and i just try to stay away from uh, such kind of people of course you make mistakes uh, sometimes you are wrong all those kind of things has happened it's just life yeah but principally, uh, I can, uh, from my side, I can stay to everyone and can talk with everyone because I know I haven't done any mistakes or haven't sued anyone or, or something like this. And this builds long-term trust and long-term trust builds long-term relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with these relationships, then it's, of course, it's much easier to work with. Fair enough. Very interesting. Um, and so tell, tell me about Hillian. Yeah, um, I said already what Helion is doing. We have these two pillars. Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, we just uh, finished our fundraising round, approximately 30, 35 million for Archeron, uh, which uh, Archeron is, an, is a health tech company uh, for cancer prevention uh, with a longevity part. There are like three obstacles what we have, and we uh, will go at the end of the year to the London Stock Exchange doing the IPO. I invested in the company when the valuation was by 7 million. Mm -hmm. uh, now the company valuation is approximately by 70 million at the moment. Sheikh Saif from National Holding um, in Abu Dhabi put also 1, uh, 1 million mm -hmm. in. So it's really, it's really high reputated. Uh, and um, currently we talk with Adnoc making a UAE a wide project out of it. Yeah. And then uh, we're planning to do our IPO on at the end of the year, the London Stock Exchange, most likely. We still think about Hong Kong and NASDAQ, yeah, but uh, from a regulator part, uh, currently we, we are more focused on London Stock Exchange. That's really interesting. Now, you and I were recently on a panel and you spoke a bit at length about the application of AI to healthcare. Is that, yes. is that what's going on here with, with Ashron? Yeah, exactly. So one part of uh, the, uh, I mean, a lot of people talking about AI. So um, uh, the co, let's say the founder and the CEO of Archeron, uh, Aviruk, uh, he developed, I mean, he learned when AI was not mostly existing, he learned AI on the Max Planck Institute in Germany many years ago. And then he was in Oxford as one of the youngest professors and all those kinds of things. So he really knows AI in and out. So 2018, we uh, developed uh, the software, what get used. If, if you go for the visa in Dubai, for the X-rays, for tuberculosis, yeah, this is the AI which already, uh, or uh, the, the AI what they're using is uh, original from, from Asheron. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. yeah and it got sold to uh, to the a prime of uh, a prime minister office i think it was like 2018 or 2017 this i don't remember exactly so principally they if you go in dubai for your visa they're using uh, you use our ai technology yeah and uh, that was the first product with uh, which we built yeah, and now have uh, additional products already pre-approved from the FDA in, in the US. Yeah, uh, for uh, pre uh, pre cancer, uh, for breast cancer, uh, lung cancer, and other and, and other cancers. And uh, yeah, it's a very interesting part. Yeah, because it's a mixture between uh, healthcare, AI, um, automated processes, sure. uh, DNA longevity all this kind of things and it's a very interesting topic and uh, mostly every time when i have a meeting yeah uh, i learn something new and that's very interesting for me it's never boring i i think that has to be an upside of the business you're in i mean you're combining tech in many areas and maybe we can talk about a few of them with investment and you're in a so it's always fun to talk about people who are smarter than you in a certain area and it sounds like you're, you're getting to, to talk with subject matter experts in a wide variety of fields and hearing what they have to say and maybe applying some creativity, combining all these ideas to come up with new things. Because what we'll, we'll comment Yeah, I mean, that's really, it's really very interesting. I mean, um, all the meetings which we have at the moment, they are really like high educated, very smart people. And really to listen to them, it really brings you... It brings to your personal life an additional value because you can grow and you can listen to them and many things I just write down and then I Google it later, yeah, because I never heard it before. And of course, I don't want to look stupid, so I write it down and then later I'm Googling it. Uh, but the, it's nice. I'm, I'm, doing with my pen. I'm, I'm, making, I'm making notes so I can yeah. be smarter later. Um, yes. You know, yeah, but we're yeah. also doing a lot of, uh, we try to bring uh, AI in the portfolio process, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, the company which we established, um, uh, Accru Capital, yeah, um, its principal uh, DeFi platform for algo traders. Uh, we we made a SaaS product out of it mm-hmm. for institutional investors. So we launched the first, um, we launched uh, the first in uh, let's say, uh, I name it DeFi fund in Luxembourg. It's not a, uh, correctly, yeah, but principal this is what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, so people or institutional investors that can now invest with a full regulated product uh, with an ISA number, yeah, in 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 DeFi protocols, yeah. So we have four strategies on the platform at the moment in which we are investing. So and uh, as I said, it's nothing for high speculating, uh, but we do approximately let's say around fifteen to twenty percent easily per year. Also in like uh, beer. Uh, uh, beer markets over the last uh, years, which we have been tracked our uh, our portfolios. Mm-hmm. So, and um, I think that's also something exciting. So, uh, beside the automated platform and the automation in the portfolio theory to Markowitz, we're also interested to uh, build AI technology for institutional investors of using Markowitz for their portfolios. Okay, and that would be good. Uh, this would be a huge jump in let's say in the asset management field. Yeah. And uh, we're working also on such kind of, let's say products or innovations. It's that a bit difficult sense. because you need a lot of input for it, but uh, that's also a very interesting field, which we're working on it at the moment. Sorry to interrupt. You, 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 you caught my interest there. When you say we're working on it, is it staff that's internal to you? You know, it's part of healing. It's a company you're partnered with. Like how, how do you actually develop this stuff? Well, um, uh, so uh, uh, Helion Capital is only one puzzle of many uh, decentralized companies uh, which we are invested in or which we're working together on partnerships. So altogether, we have, I don't know, it's like now 45, 50 people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And one part of our team uh, is in, uh, we have an office in India. We're working for us on this such kind of technologies. Yeah. And uh, I mean, today we have people, we have in Bali people, we have in India people, we have in Switzerland people, we have in Estonia people, we have in Luxembourg people, in Dutch, in Lithuania, we have people, some in Germany, of course, Dubai, yeah, but also like Florida, so we're very spread it, yeah, uh, just we see where the talents are, and then we're trying to bring them together. And then, of course, we try to build this kind of technologies, yeah, 
it sounds always very fancy and very big, but it's a lot of it's 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 a lot of puzzling. You know, you have to bring a lot of little pieces together to get a product out of it. Mm -hmm. So, and that's a bit an issue because most investors they don't want to really invest in um, in analyzers and in experiments. Of course, I understand they don't want to burn money. Uh, but this is also what we're trying to do and developing new innovation products for the banking uh, uh, sector uh, uh, in the industry, because we not only uh, believe that the banking industry is uh, disrupted, yeah, also like the VC business is disrupted. So what I mean with this is what worked over all the last years is not working in the future. I'm not saying in the future, no banks are existing anymore, but the banks, they will look different. And we're trying to build the tools. It doesn't matter if it's AML, KYC, risk management, portfolio management, or whatever. We're trying to build tools where they can use them to make their um, transmission from, let's say, I don't know, Web 0 0.5 at least <laughs> to, uh, to Web 2.0 or something like this. Yeah. Uh, so Deutsche Bank, it's, it's Web 0, 0. 0.5. One or something, uh, yeah, uh, or something like this. So, and on this, um, um, uh, the esports funds which we just launched now, and which we also like investing in it, yeah. Um, let's say it's a very much. Also, we are interested. Let's say in um, in investing in fintech, mm -hmm. yeah, because esports without fintech it doesn't give an ecosystem. Yeah, and one thing what the most institutional investors don't understand, you cannot only invest in a part of it. You mm -hmm. have to invest in an ecosystem. And this is, for example, what we did uh, uh, by Crypto Aces. Yeah, so we had the talents, we had the infrastructure, and we have the capital to create an ecosystem. Yeah, and this is something which works, in my opinion. It not only works in a small ecosystem, you also can leverage and scale this to a bigger one. And um, that's the reason why we... Uh, with our esports funds, which we launched now just like two weeks ago, I think you uh, you you've been on the party, yeah. So uh, uh, it's like um, uh, for us to really to create and to develop an ecosystem for gaming. So mm -hmm. we talk here with different players in the UAE market and in the uh, Saudi market at the moment. The Saudi esports minister Sheikh Faisal is uh, part of our advisory board, for example, for for Asheron Group, yeah. Really? So we try okay. really. Yeah, so really try to, um, um, let's say, accelerate and build and grow an ecosystem around the fund product, yeah, uh, to make this product uh, successful. Because you cannot only make a single investment in something and hoping from your 100 single investments, maybe you have some unicorns. Because what we see at the, mar at the, mar at the market at the moment, the unicorns getting less and less. Yeah, because the markets are getting more diversified and diversified. But so it, having really explain that to me, the unicorns are getting less and less. What 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 does that mean, and why is it happening? Uh, in my opinion, this is an, I don't know the English word decrescence effect. What you have, um, yeah. So what about what you see? If you look in, if you look in equity companies and in investment structure. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you compare like them used to be and today, you will find out that used to be more companies has been overperformed, yeah, as mm -hmm. they're doing today. So it means today the uh, the let's say the uh, the output of successful companies in your portfolio is much less. So and we have a completely different uh, approach. So in mm -hmm. the companies which we investing, we investing only if we can leverage them. So it means leveraging, accelerating them means uh, we can provide them with additional network, with uh, additional capital. Mm -hmm. And we have already an idea how to accelerate these companies. Yeah. With who they can work together, in which ecosystem we can bring them to make it roundabout, to build the ecosystem and to and, and to keep the ecosystem closed. And this is, in my opinion, uh, a successful way to, to implement and to make companies growing. Yeah. And this is uh, the let's say this is the kind of environment for what we're looking for in the companies which we are investing. Of so course, we're still doing. Sorry, let me yeah. let me repeat that back to you to make sure I actually understood you. you if I heard you correctly, you're, you're saying the reason we had unicorns in the past was for for whatever structural reasons it was possible for them to perform very well and scale, and the, the conditions were ripe, if you like. 
that seems to be less common now, maybe because things are more competitive or efficient or just the, the, for whatever structural reason, it's very hard to have a, a massive win is what I think I heard you say. So you're, 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 you've acknowledged that new environment and part of your selection process is finding companies that would, that would have earlier maybe been a unicorn, but can't be now, but lending yep. to them your, your sort of eco, your ecosystem support insight, capital, everything else, so that they can kind of cross that chasm where otherwise they would have a trouble. Is, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. It's very interesting. I, I hadn't heard someone explain, you know, cl claim and then explain why unicorns are more rare. That's a very, that's very interesting. I'm I mean, just have a look to, um, uh, we had a conversation with a big family office from Singapore. They have only in Singapore, uh, probably like 1.1 trillion under assets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I look to their products, uh, the equity products, yeah, uh, they are not successful. Because why? Mm -hmm. What has been changed? Where, why there had used to be, of course, then you hear a lot of this regular arg arguments about uh, like, you know, market interest, all this kind of macroeconomic uh, 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 ex ex explanations. Yeah? yeah. But the reality is, if you look in the portfolios, the companies who has been overperformed are much less as they were used to be the ratio. So on this is, I mean, you also could say, okay, the bankers are too far away from the reality or from the business. <laughs> I don't think they want to hear this, but uh, principally is, uh, in my opinion, and how and the question is how you, how you can avoid this. You can only avoid this if you invest in an in an ecosystem where things with each other are connected and you can scale it. Especially that's, for startups. That's, that's a passing argument. You, you, I mean, you're 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 at least implying that what the Singapore family offices are running into is separate from their management or lack of management or choices or not choices. There's a global structural situation that is inescapable that's affecting everyone. And yes. then they, they need to adapt to it by taking this ecosystem approach. Yeah, and I found it very funny because they, uh, they, they, they're talking about the great pro uh, products and they're making loss. <laughs> well, you know. So, that's a bit... It's a bit like, okay, uh, what the guy want to tell me about his great product? Okay, I'm making loss. Interesting equity company. I would suggest, okay, I have a higher risk, so I have a higher return. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you look them inside, you find out, okay, something uh, something doesn't fit. So principally, we um, uh, are looking with the eSports e fund to pick up this yeah, uh, topic, yeah, and to invest really in ecosystems. And uh, ecosystems investment means not in the whole ecosystem, but in uh, parts of the ecosystem which uh, combine themselves with each, each other, yeah. So, and that is if you have uh, if you have gaming, you need financing. Gaming without financing doesn't make so. And then you try to combine them, to, uh, for example. So we have not a pure esports gaming fund. What we have is an um, is a is a smart uh, mixture uh, between different components. To build an ecosystem around it yeah and, and this makes sense and then you can overperform still and are, are all the components of the ecosystem in-house or do you selectively team up with or partner with ex trusted or useful external resources well we believe in partnerships yeah and in teamwork um so i i do not believe you can be successful alone yeah uh, you always need people around you uh, who are trustable and with who you share ideas and who you can grow and who you can move forward. So uh, Helion was always a place for uh, for this kind of value. So what I mean with this is we're always looking for partnerships. It doesn't matter where we go. So in Hong Kong, we have Cyberport, for example. Yeah. So we have to uh, uh, we work together with the uh, uh, commerce of uh, um, a chamber of commerce in 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 Hong Kong, yeah. So we have eighty three family offices in Singapore. We have around twenty three good family offices in Hong Kong, yeah. We have approximately uh, here in in the UI we have around like two hundred family offices, yeah. Uh, where we're looking into it, yeah. So and you have to understand it. 
where they're coming from to know how you want to lead them and where you want to bring them. And and this is, let's say, our components, what we're trying to do also like different to other ones. So what I want to say is a very simple thing. You know, it's a, if you are good a sales guy, yeah, yeah, and you're going to offer something, you're not going uh, to a customer without knowing already what you're offering and what is the need what he has. Yeah, if I look to many uh, people, if if they are approached to family office or to investors, yeah, um, they're coming with their product, they're explaining their product, and they have they have no clue what these people really want. So you have to do your homework before before you go, and then you can make a tailor handmade solution for these people. And this is for what a lot of family office, especially at the moment, looking for. So they're not looking for like. Um, investing in um in a general fund because they see the returns so how you can increase the returns only over investing in an ecosystem i'll give you one example we have one fund which we're launching now mm -hmm. it's um it's a fund about bringing technology uh companies uh high energy companies to uh, uh to gcc Okay. Yeah, we tried it with uh, Abu Dhabi. It didn't work behind the aluminium factory in Abu Dhabi. There's a huge area. Yeah, we tried to bring this there, but they were too slowly. They didn't respond. So now we found a counterpart in Saudi Arabia. They're very happy because they want to produce and the PIF is even organizing and like paying people coming there. They have no, they have this idea to grow in this area to build production in Saudi. Yeah, so, so we set up a fund we, um, we have an accelerator in Saudi. We have an accelerator, for example, in Scandinavia yeah, or in Germany. Yeah, we, we're picking the SMEs which we need. We finance them with our fund and bring them to Saudi and can give them additional value uh, with, with our organization to the PIF and to other uh, like authorities. We're more than happy to support them and also to finance them. And then mm -hmm. you create an ecosystem. You have a roundabout. You have know-how. You have the infrastructure and you have the capital. Yeah, that's always the three components uh, 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 what you need. And uh, we can support this. And then you can build an ecosystem around it. Yeah. So right, and you're, I think you're, 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 you're great. You're great. I I, I'm, you, you got my no, I mean, you got my mind. Both, I talk now. between friends. It's not like I, I know you, you will publish everything, but that's okay. But uh, principally, so now, and with this smart products, we make sure that Saudis investing in Saudi and Europe's investing in their own smart technologies. The biggest market for Europe always been China, Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. And we give them then and closer and faster access to this area with the network what we also have there, as mm -hmm. they would still produce in Europe. So and then you have then you go around. You have a closed system. And now, you are let, out let, of let me, let me kind of run with one of the themes you introduced in the back row. You, you've been in Dubai for 25 years and you saw it very undeveloped and you saw it become developed and you saw it become more relaxed in Dubai. And I guess we didn't talk about it, but I guess you saw it become stricter in Sharjah. But Saudi is sort of the new hotspot or newish hotspot and is doing a big push. And what I'm constantly hearing is that's where the action is. How do you, how do you, you know, you are here. How, how do you balance the GCC and your investments and your time and your approaches between this massive player, you know, on the peninsula, I mean, not the peninsula. What am I trying to say? You know, in this landmass, like, I'm, I'm losing my vocabulary. And, you know, how, how, do you, how do you maintain your balance going forward? Well, that's a good question. Oh, well, thank you very much. Do, 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 do you have a good answer? <laughs> That's a twenty four seven question. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm. Of course, I'm traveling. I just came back from Saudi. Monday, I fly to Bahrain. Uh, uh, to Bahrain. Mm -hmm. uh, so, of course, you travel a lot. You, you uh, travel a lot, meeting people and doing things. But I think it's valid to do it. So uh, I see there are great opportunities. And um, coming uh, back I'm to Saudi, sorry, that's, that's not quite an answer there because you you have set amount of capital, set amount of time, set amount of attention. You're very dynamic, which is why I was saying you're great. You are very dynamic, but you've got to allocate and you're here, but stuff is happening over there. And over there is not that far away, but it's not here. So what do you yeah. do exactly? It's just a lot of work. 
God, it's just a lot of work and communication and everything. And uh, but one more comment uh, to Saudi. What I like really much on the Saudi. Uh, um, so in Dubai, you have an outside in market. Yeah, companies coming, entrepreneurs coming from the world, coming to Dubai, setting up a company, living here, all those kind of things. Dubai, you have a different ecosystem. You have an inside out ecosystem. And that's a fundamentally it, it's 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 say, opposite Dubai as Dubai. Or Saudi does. I think you were contrasting the two, right? No, no. Uh, Dubai has an has an outside in ecosystem. Outside in, okay, and then Saudi has yeah. an inside. Saudi has an outside, uh, an inside outside ecosystem. Right. Okay. Saudi is developing their own technologies and visions and innovations. What they want to bring to the world. Yeah, Dubai is more like a vacuum cleaner of taking these things inside to consideration and mm -hmm. inside of, let's say, being number one in some technology parts. Yeah, so, and that you have two completely opposite ecosystems. Mm. What I like on the ecosystem in Saudi is, I mean, Saudi has been sent over, over 10 years, I think, every year, 250,000 students to the top universities in the world. Mm. And now when you go to Saudi and you have the, the meetings with them, you know, you have Harvard, MIT, you know, you have only top educated young people. And yeah, and this is, for example, an opposite to Europe. Uh, in Europe, they're thinking about, um, I don't want to, I, I think I cannot say this here in the interview in this podcast, but in Saudi, they really think about, okay, what do I need, what I have to do to be successful in the future? How I have to teach my, my, my kids how do I have to teach my people to be successful in the future? And today, I think the second or third biggest Harvard club is in Riyadh. It's, it has over 5,000 members. Wow. Yeah. So, and, and, and only this number, if you take this number, then you understand how much they have been invested in their own people. That, you know, it's interesting. That goes against the stereotype because the stereotype is number one, going to school in England. And number two, kind of doing that in preparation for a cushy government job where they delegate everything out and drink coffee. I mean, sorry, that is the stereotype. What you're talking about is almost more like a Chinese model where, the, you know, China, I don't, I just says China flooded the US higher institutions with students and got their engineering degrees and got their advanced degrees. They got some experience abroad, learned Western techniques, mm -hmm. and then they went home to start companies that are now very successful. And it, and it sounds like you're, it sounds like there's a true technocratic elite in Saudi that got formed over these past past decade or so that most people, myself included, didn't weren't aren't aware that were that they're there. And now you're going there yeah. and dealing with this technocratic elite that's a little bit against the stereotype. But that's interesting. Yeah, but uh, Saudi, I mean, I think they have seen this and they found out that um, maybe let's say it's better to. Uh, uh, privatize or to uh, privatize their uh, parts of their um, economy or parts of the uh, authorities mm -hmm. because uh, PIF is nothing else as a big, big family office of outsourced uh, government uh, sure. functions. So they more or less take all the smart people what they have. They said, okay, now we have like market conditions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, to, to have this flexibility to be fast on the market and to make changes instead of having this long, long way through the uh, through the authorities, so and they try to break this model, in my opinion. What is very smart, and should they just outsource it in a private institution? That's a private family office in in in, in the PIF, in the MIST, what they have. Yeah, they have different organizations like this, and that's very interesting to see how they're trying to speed this process. And I think the Saudis they're doing this uh, very smart, yeah, uh, and 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 very structured. Yeah. So, and, um, and I think that's uh, something, at least this was my experience when I've been now in Saudi, mm -hmm. I was in the last uh, two months, three times in Saudi, for example. Yeah. And, and I really see this and I feel it. And, uh, and that's just a, a kind of, uh, it's a good feeling because you really have the, you really feel they want to move, you know, they really want to change things. I, I, I have an interesting perspective. I, I've never been to Saudi, to be honest. And I'm a little bit nervous that the moment I go, I won't be able to come back just because I want to be where the action is. 
And right now, for me, it feels like Dubai. But I'm afraid if I go to Riyadh and, and see what's going on, I'll be like, I can't go back. I can just visit. But, you know, I need to reallocate my life. It's just like, you know, when, when I visited Dubai from Los Angeles, I'm like, I can't go back to Los Angeles. Yeah. You know? Yes. I mean, um, still, I mean, what you have, it's you have two different ecosystems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you understand the ecosystems, uh, then, you, of course, you understand also how to... Um, I don't want to say use, but how to uh, uh, making helping you to making business. Oh, leverage. Yeah, and I think, yeah, to leverage. Yeah, and I think that's just a great experience. Mm -hmm. So uh, last time I had, you know, uh, Dubai beginning of two thousand was the same. Yeah, you had in this eyes this little uh, uh, lights. Yeah, when they spoke about their country and how they want to develop it. And now Dubai is mostly developed, and it's now in the next stage of scaling to a metropole city. Yes. Of course, they have a lot of innovation still and everything goes fast and they want to be number one and they're doing a lot. Yeah. So, but I don't know when Saudi will pick up. Yeah. Let's say. Yeah. But of course, it's a kind of uh, competition now also for the UAE. And I think competition is always good. Yeah. And uh, so, but there are com two completely different ecosystems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And both ecosystem has advantages and disadvantages. But if you can combine them, yeah, uh, I think it's a great thing. That's so that's an interesting perspective. You're you're saying take sort of a macro perspective to GCC. Don't get stuck in like maybe one cell of it. Yep. Or just sort of understand yep. how you can leverage the specific environment here, here, and maybe do something synergistic between them or allocate intelligently. Yes. Um, you know, I, I I could talk to you for a very long time, both socially because I like you, and also because this is interesting. I I, I, I want to, as we're getting towards the end, I, I want to ask you this. Suppose someone's watching this video and they're like, oh, interesting. Who do you want to talk to? Who would benefit from talking to you? And what, what's the nature of the conversation? Who who should be reaching out to you? And who do you want to be connected with? Well, I mean, a, a principle, I still see myself as part of the ecosystem in Dubai because this is, uh, let's say, uh, um, how I grew up here now with incubating the com the companies. Of course, now is already a long time, but principle, I think it doesn't matter if it's an investor or is it a startup, yeah, or someone who want to build something or has ideas for an accelerator or something like this, building regulated products. I'm principally open for everything to talk with, yeah. Um, I just have to bit sort then uh, what is really interesting for Helion Capital as a business model, yeah, and uh, what is, let's say, it's maybe more interesting for someone else. Okay, and well, that leads into the next question. What, what is your? I mean, you you've mentioned AI and healthcare. You mentioned esports, the and DeFi. What what is your number one and maybe number two, maybe you already said it. But what what what's your primary area of interest where you're like, no, this is not for someone else. This is for me. Oh well, I'm. Uh, I don't think like this. Okay. Uh, uh, for me, it's like um, um, uh, for me, it's like uh, doing things what no one tries to do before. So uh, it started with uh, Iconic Holding being number one in Europe uh, with a regulated Bitcoin ETH into the German stock market. Okay, we've been number three, I think. Mm -hmm. Then it started here with setting up uh, the DMCC Crypto Center, where we've been unique. Yeah, what we did at this time. Then, of course, also like a building. Uh, Crypto Asus was a unique idea, yeah, as a mirror reflecting to Crypto Valley in, in like in, yeah. in Switzerland, yeah. So and now and and now having this healthcare is something unique because uh, um, we can reduce we we have a kind of small revolution in the healthcare sector also for longevity, mm -hmm. yeah. What uh, what we're doing with our products, um, that's a kind of unique thing and having now like a. A uh, regulated digital DeFi fund uh, in Luxembourg is also something unique. Yeah, uh, where we are, where we are number one, and it's like, um, and I'm I'm now more looking for this kind of exciting projects. Yeah, uh, um, because I think you know, if you know your value and if you know how much uh, network you have and especially how professional you can work, mm -hmm. you're not afraid looking for solutions for such topics. Okay, interesting. Yeah, so it, it's it's not it's not that you're into this field or that field. You want to hear brave new ideas that have promise, and then yes, if, even if it's something you haven't done before, if it strikes a chord with you, you may proceed with it. It it, it doesn't yes, have exactly. to be in a particular industry. 
Is that fair? Don't have to be a specific industry. Of course, we're still looking for blockchain and crypto a lot. Yeah, uh, but uh, principally, it, it, it's not really like a, a, a specific industry. So now it's health, uh, healthcare. We have AI, we have DNA, we have longevity. There are so many parts around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, also then to develop new products or to do some uh, some something new. At the moment, as I said, we're very much focused on fintech. Uh, we're just uh, thinking to invest in a bank in Europe, yeah, mm -hmm. which is uh, also which we can combine our products with with the bank yeah, to build something new. And I don't want to say so much now. So this is something what we're looking for example in, but only every time with an ecosystem. Every time if it's a, an, an ecosystem where mm -hmm. we can different of our investments to create an additional value for, uh, for everyone. That's great. You know, I'm, I'm glad you highlighted that. So underneath all this diversity of interest, there's a fundamental play, which is it has to be something where your ecosystem can work with it. It adds value to your ecosystem and your ecosystem adds value to it. You're taking, I think, always a holistic ecosystem-based approach. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. Okay. That, that's a great perspective. Um, I think I think this was a great interview. I mean, hopefully I can ask yes. It's always nice garden with you. So, uh, I mean, I, I really appreciate you because um, um, uh, uh, on my first, when I was first time speaker, I think it was 2019 or 2020. I don't remember exactly. How is this possible? Yeah, you're 25 uh, years and you're, and I'm the one who took your speaker. First time on a, on a, on a, on a podium as a moderator. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And yeah, so uh, it's, it's always great talking with you. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. I'm going to stop the recording and thanks, Oliver. Fantastic.